Brian and Kenzie in the morning and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. All right, we're going to continue this conversation about your weird coworker at 312-591-8300 and also how you can get into the offspring tonight at the Metro. A very easy way to do it. And we'll do that after we launch Ticket Puts Thursday, which right now we're doing it. The ticket window is open. Tickets! Ticket Blitz Thursday on Q101. Rainbow Kitten Surprise at Credit Union One Arena, the former UIC Pavilion. It's a week from Saturday. Tickets are on sale now. A few left. Our great friends at Jam Productions got these tickets to give to you through us. So text DEVIL, like the song DEVIL, like me, that they have. So text DEVIL to 312 591 8300 right now for your chance to win. Text DEVIL. To 312 591 8300 to get those tickets. Now, we're talking about a guy, a listener that checked in with us uh, that has a problem at work because they have hundreds of employees and they're all sharing a microwave and people are coming up and go, hey, can I put my food in too Weird. while you're nuking yours so we don't waste time and getting the food? But it makes more time out of it, according to our tech person there. But then, in case the producer doesn't still understand, if you put two things in it, for example, one piece of pizza versus four pieces of pizza, it's going to take longer for those pieces, and you have to keep rotating them. It's not going to be as good as doing one at a time. I just can't imagine his time is that valuable to where he can't help a coworker out and maybe share some but microwave space. You're not listening. It's not helping. You're going to stand there for the same amount of time. It's just stupid. And then he's got to pause, open it, put it in, do it. Wait 30 more seconds. Microwaves don't take 25 minutes. And it depends what you're doing. No, not really. Well, those big family Stouffer's mac and thank cheese you, plates. Thank you. Yes, yeah, exactly. See, I've microwaved some pasta for ten minutes at a time. <laughs> that's just okay. Also, I didn't know how that's the a oven separate worked. thing. Like, but it's, usually it's very fast. Yeah. it's like you just wait. Sorry it, about it. It's not just the suit, like the big family. I've eaten the whole mm-hmm. Stouffer's. Like your Thanksgiving okay. family <laughs> size of mac and cheese. It takes 20 minutes that, to make it. That's a separate conversation if you bring in a Stouffer's lasagna, yeah. an entire pan for your lunch. Oh, it's so good, though. Separate discussion. Those right. boxes are so big at the grocery store, you need to put chalk on your hands like a weightlifter just to carry it and put it in your cart. <laughs> and then you come home and it's like, oh, how long do I put this in the microwave? Oh, 19 minutes. Awesome. Let me watch an episode of The Office real quick Ugh. while this heats up. And then they might say something like, Oh, everybody's eating good tonight. And I'd say, no, just me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat this whole mac and cheese tray myself. It's like an overly friendly Trader Joe's cashier. Like, ah, oh, big plants tonight. You got the whole family coming in? Nope, know. just me. I just think this guy should make some sandwiches because and stop dealing with everybody. Sandwiches are great. You don't have to deal with the microwave. Uh, Case also had somebody texted and said, why don't they just buy more microwaves at the office? And they're not that expensive anymore for just a... For hundreds of people using two microwaves at the office is pretty ridiculous. Did they used to be expensive? Yes. What, what did the microwave used to cost? I think like a couple hundred dollars. Okay, I'm looking at one right now at Kohl's for $128. Oh, they're still pretty expensive, huh? I thought they were like under a, like 50 I bucks now. I you could get a cheaper one. Yeah, but don't skip out on the microwave. It's the most important part of a household. You know what he should do? <laughs> he should have a personal desk microwave, and then he could go cheap with it. Personal desk microwave. I, I knew people that did that at their cubicle had a little microwave in there. Also, air fryers are probably better as far as reheating stuff. Air fryers are awesome. No, but air fryers are so loud. It's like a it's like a jet engine. I don't, the, the one that I have. Microwaves make just as much noise. <laughs> no, they, they don't. Just yes, the beeping at do. the end. The microwave itself does not make a ton of noise. It does too. I'm so sick of this microwave slander. Well, I like microwaves. <laughs> no one slanders microwaves. It microwave. sounds like you hate microwaves. Uh. Why? I just said they also make noise, but the noise of an air fryer doesn't bother me. It excites me. <laughs> Every time I hear it, it's going to be good. That's your problem. Well, there's obviously a lot of weird people at work doing weird things like asking, hey, can I pop my stuff in with your stuff in the microwave? That's weird to me. I guess maybe it's not. Maybe you guys check in on I'm it. I'm going to walk up to a rando. I know. Think about how That's comfortable weird. you have to be with yourself to have the confidence. No. I struggle asking, like, if they get my order wrong in a restaurant, like, hey, can you actually go back and, and do it the way that I asked? Let alone, hey, I'm going to use the microwave at the same time as you. That is a little weird. It's, I- it's way too... I feel like they put the, your, their, like, arm around you while it's heating up. It's yeah. way too much. Absolutely not. Like Will Ferrell in the beginning of Step Brothers when he's watching his um, nachos heat up in the microwave when the Vampire Weekend song is playing. And uh-huh. he's, he, like, looks through the window at the stuff heating up and waiting for it to finish. Yes. Put his too, arm around you going... Too uncomfortable. Can't wait till we eat lunch together, huh, buddy? Oh, that's going to no. be awesome. That's going to be great. Yeah, then you have small talk. But, uh, I'm completely on this guy's side. I, I gotta thought, be honest. It now seems like something Brian would do. Oh, uh, no, I, I really wouldn't. I wouldn't cross that line because you can't go back after that. If you're already a microwave sharer, you can't go back. Not only would I say no, I would 
walk up there with AirPods in and stare at my phone the whole time. I was like, no, can't hear you. Sorry, the AirPods. Is the whole oh, thing. man. Uh, you know, this reminded me of a coworker, like, of a weird coworker. There was a guy who I worked at at a radio station before his show. He, he brought a trainer in before his show started because he didn't, he said he didn't have time to work out at home. That should be admirable. But he was doing isometric exercises. Do you know what that is? Where you kind of contort your body for certain, like you, you have to hold like a plank or a wall squat. He was doing it at work. And he would take his shirt off and the trainer would take his shirt off too. This, <laughs> and Wait, this, the trainer came in like next to the cubicles? Yeah, like let's say right outside our studio, we have the green room for the lounge. He would do it in the hallway before he went on. And it was a big- With a guest? <laughs> yeah, he'd bring in a trainer, his trainer. And he would sit there and take his shirt off and he was not ripped. And he would take his shirt off and do these planks and wall squats and uh, glute bridges, they call it. And he would sit there and sweat and smell. And his show was starting like in 10 minutes. He would do it. And he'd go, hey, I get my workout in before the show. I go, yeah, but you could do you this could like do at home. home. Yeah. He would That's do- so weird. And that would bother me. He would sweat and the sweat would go into the carpet right there, you know? Why are people so comfortable at work? <laughs> I don't we spend like most that. Of our, we spend most of our lives here. I get don't comfy. like it. Don't get comfortable. Did you ever have a weird coworker, Kenzie? Like somebody oh, weird? Oh, my God. So there's a guy named Case. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking about all the weird things I do. Yeah. <laughs> no, so when I was a waitress, and this used to bother me so much. There was a girl I worked with. Her name was Christine. I don't care if you're listening. I don't like you. Wow. But Shots was, fired at Christine's out there. Not like all of them. This one. Oh, just one not Christine. Nice. But she would go open, like, the the old-school black checkbooks that used to be on the table. Like, I feel like now everyone uses the pin pad. But, you know, when you used to, like, get your tab in a checkbook, you'd, you know, put, put the pen in it. If you were leaving cash, you'd put it in there, all that. Got it. She used to go around to your tables, because when you're busy, you can't pick them up right away, right? So you're helping another table, you walk by and get it. She used to walk past my tables, open them up to see what they tipped me. Oh. And it drove, I'd be like, why do you keep opening my tabs when you're walking by? She's like, oh, I'm always just curious if like a table's cheap or not. And I'm like, please don't do that. And I'd catch her doing it all the time. And then it's like, if they left you cash, you'd always feel weird because like maybe she grabbed a dollar or two out of it. Or I'm like, stop opening my checkbooks because you want to know how much a table tipped because that's a game you're playing in your head. It would piss me off. Like, don't touch my money. Like, I was so bothered by it. I would love to know because a lot of our listeners worked in the restaurant and bartending field because I didn't. Is that common to want to like no, snoop I about never. somebody else's tips I've all the time? never. Like you would like hope for people. You'd be like, oh, were they good because they like they were celebrating something or whatever. But I never would have opened someone's tab. That is so weird and uncomfortable. Wow. It's like personal. It's your money. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, because I, I, I didn't work in that field. I worked in other like golf course and stuff like that. I never worked in a field where people. I got tipped at golf course. We did. We used to always. I used to get mad if someone else got tipped more than me for caddying. Right, that, but like, yeah, and that's funny because like you're helping two different people, so whatever. Or yeah. we would share that as waitresses. Like, oh my gosh, this table just totally stiffed me. They used 18 coupons and then stiffed me. That sucks. Like, you would share those stories, but you don't go open someone's tab. Like. When they're not standing there, you could take something out of it. it oh, I would get so mad. Case, did you ever have a weird coworker when you were a rising star at Lids? No, not at Lids. I was thinking about something weird that I got caught doing at work that I never told you guys about. Here Uh-oh, or somewhere oh boy. else? No, here, like oh last month. Oh, no. Oh, no. So <laughs> during Lollapalooza, I, I spent the night in the studio because Thursday I went, I did the show. I went to Lala. I went to an after show. And then I came back here, and there's always somebody here working in the building 24-7, even on, like, Christmas and holidays and whatnot. And I was sleeping in the green room that is connected to the lounge, and I was ready for bed. I had taken my melatonin. I had taken my contacts out. My sleep cap was on. I did a big stretch. <laughs> this is what I mean about people way too comfortable at work. <laughs> well, Kinsey, it gets worse. Oh, oh no. no. And uh, at this point, again, I'm, I'm ready to go to bed, so I'm in my... Uh, delectables, if you will, uh, T-shirt and uh, Duluth branded underwear. Mm. You were literally just in your underwear here. So, <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. Again, lights are off. I'm in the green room, connected to the lounge. Big stretch, yawn, whatever, whatever. Hong Shu, me, me, me. And I realize, oh no, my phone charger is in the studio across the hall. I don't have my phone charger with me. I need to charge my phone. It's almost dead. So I got up. 
and in my T-shirt and underwear, walked across the hall into the studio. Yeah. But at that moment, the guy that was down the hall working for one of our sister stations was also in the hallway, and he saw me half naked walking across the building. Ah! <laughs> it kind of gave me the like. Hey, what's going on? And it was uh, deeply uncomfortable. I picture you for some reason. For him? <laughs> what is wrong with you? I, I, I have to go get my charger. I picture you in those old school boxers with like hearts all over it. <laughs> yeah. Not like boxer briefs that are like decent looking at least. Or you know? I had like, like a heart tattoo with mom on it, like an old prison yeah. tattoo also. <laughs> I imagine those animal boxers were like the head cuts off near your penis. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? No. How it looks like a body and then it's like over the penis flap. It like stops. It looks like a character. Wait, 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 wait. You haven't seen these? <laughs> no. What is this again? Okay, like, when you have animal print boxers, like a print on your boxers, and they make, like, a shape, like, a, say it's like an animal, it's like a cow or something, but it stops, like, by your penis. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, no. your penis is part of the caricature? I've never had animal print boxers, so I don't know. Oh, I know what you guys are getting for Christmas. <laughs> oh, that's our Christmas gift. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q. 101. All right. Well, the offspring tonight at the Metro with Q101, our pop up with Wintrust Community Bank, and uh, it's free. All our pop ups are usually you just walk up and go in, but this one is the offspring at the Metro. We can't have 50,000 people in line uh, causing a riot out there. I mean, that'd be pretty fun, but we can't do it. So you had to win tickets to get in. Now, if you haven't won them yet, it's tonight. So obviously, time is tight. Here's what's going on today. Brian Phillips, our guy in the afternoon, will be broadcasting live from Almost Home Tavern and Grill from 3 to 7 p.m. That's his showtime. And every half hour, he's giving away tickets to the Metro to see the offspring tonight. Every half hour. So you got a great shot. If you just go there, hang out, they have great food at that bar. It's the bar that Kenzie and I and Case did the uh, Cubs home opener. Yeah. Uh, that bar, it's, right, it's kind of di- diagonally north of Metro, it's and right there on cloud. good size, which is important because, like, I hate when it gets squished. It's a good size bar. You're not going to be all squishy. <laughs> um, I would love to give a little tip, too. Oh. Find someone to bring double the chance of winning. If you can't, go to the crew members page. I bet you a million dollars if someone else is like, well, I'm going to go by myself. You two team up. Because then if either of you win, you'll give somebody, because it's a pair of tickets every half hour. Great idea. So if I were you, I would not go into this thing alone. Either team up with somebody like, you know, you want to bring your mom, dad, significant other, whatever. But if someone's unavailable because they're like babysitting or something, find another single crew member who like couldn't find somebody last minute to go to the bar. Exactly. Double your chances. Great idea. Almost Home Tavern and Grill. And here's the thing. You hang out with Brian Phillips. He's fun. You get a chance to win tickets. And even if you don't win tickets, well, you can stay there and watch the Cubs game or even try to get a ticket to the Cubs game last minute right down the street. So it's a win-win all the way around, and you have a good time on a great summer night in September here in Chicago. So Almost Home Tavern and Grill right there by the Metro. It's just across the street and diagonally north of it. Q101.com is all the info, but every half hour, okay? So coming up tomorrow on the show, by the way, in the 8 o'clock hour, we start Halloween a little early because there's too many movies for Case, the producer, to, re- to review. We talked about October being Halloween month, but the way we are kind of going through it, we miss out on a couple of movies that need to be done. So tomorrow at 8, Case does The Shining. The Shining is tomorrow at 8. One of my favorite of all time. It's one of my favorite books. It's one of my favorite movies. I'm so excited. Case is really disturbed about this because he hates horror movies. He does not now, like them at all. Ryan and I, well, I will say that I spent a long time. This is my genre. It's my holiday. I spent a long time really like um, the curating what the next handful of weeks should be through October. And then I pitched it to Brian and we uh, fine tuned it a little bit more. There's a lot of effort into hitting some really important <laughs> bases. And of course, Stephen King on that list. Right. And then it's like, what do we do with Stephen King? And you and I both agreed on The Shining. So I'm so excited for this. It's a great horror movie to start with. One of the greatest of all time. I had nightmares as a kid case to this movie. Oh, I st- awesome. I can't wait to watch this. It when sounds it like so kid. much fun. <laughs> Kids are wimpy. It's not I'm, like I'm wimpy. I know, but... Um, I was I was 27. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I don't think... Actually, Case, I have to say, I really think you may like this movie. It's not so much a jump scare movie. It's just, it's cool. It's unique. It's like, what is going on here? I think you may really, really enjoy it. Also, without giving away a spoiler... You do like a lot of bands, mm. a lot of hardcore bands, mm. that uh, some of them are broken people, you uh-huh. know, some, <laughs> that you can express in their music. A lot of bad neighborhoods up in their head. Yes. Jack Torrance, Jack Nicholson's character in The Shining, 
Boy, is he broken. <laughs> he would be like a military gun fan. He'd be like super into them. <laughs> That's what I'll talk about tomorrow. With The Shining, I'll figure out what bands each of these characters would like. I think that's a good use of my time. If you could pull that off at eight, that'd be amazing. That will actually help me watch all these movies if I can just (laughs) compare these characters what bands they might like. Oh, God. Uh, that's going to be very... You have some options, let's say. You have some options. My mind is swirling with that idea. It's so good. Because I don't think... Family Guy has done a parody of The Shining. I'll have to look, but I my, bet they have. My only stunned. knowledge of Stephen King is there's a Family Guy episode where they parody a bunch of Stephen King movies, in particular Misery, some of the funniest Family Guy stuff ever. <laughs> wow. And that's that's normally my pop culture reference, my go to. I don't re- I don't know anything about The Shining. I don't you know what The Shining is. You may not have realized it because I do think they have an episode where they're quoting Red Rum, and that's from the movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I, I don't think that you would have recognized that. It's because it's a smaller part, like. It's it's just a little detail of the movie, if that makes sense, not the plot. Sure. But I think there is a red rum joke, isn't there? I, I'm gonna look at when we do we play Oasis here, I'm gonna look for a red rum and a family you look guy so episode. Excited. Honestly, Brian always says he's jealous. Case, I am gonna be jealous of you for the as we go on this six week journey. Ugh. Cause these are some of my favorite movies of all time. They molded me as a child. I, I, it sounds scary. <laughs> well, that explains so much. I know. You know allowed me to, to read Stephen King. It was some of the first novels I ever read as a kid. I read them in elementary school. And I, I'm jealous. I really am. All right. So that's tomorrow at 8. We find out with Jack Torrance what punk band he would have been listening to. <laughs> While, <laughs> while, murder, while murdering. <laughs> it's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. In light of what's happened with a lot of our bands, Foo Fighters, Jane's Addiction, Oasis seem like well-adjusted young men, don't they? Don't they really do that? I can't wait till a Chicago show is announced. So far, there's not with the reunion. Uh, there's a there's a date out there at Soldier Field that's unofficial. I believe it's August 27th of next year. That's unofficial. Unofficial, just the wonderful internet talking. But sometimes the internet's right. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes, sometimes. sometimes it is. Yeah, do your own research. You yeah. know, you'll find the right answer eventually. You know, as you like to say, follow the money. That's right. That's what I like to say. <laughs> that's my famous quote. If you follow the money, you get the right answer. <laughs> Live Moss. Uh, <laughs> so some local stories around Chicago land. This one urgent, especially for my wife, I just realized as I went through the story. Kenzie found the story that um, waffles recalled in multiple states, including Illinois, due to plastic contamination. Put your waffle down. <laughs> right now, put the waffle down. <laughs> But what this is, is we buy this stuff. Uh, Kodiak cakes, the protein, uh, protein-packed protein powder. powder waffles. For You can make pancakes, oh, waffles. I have these, too. Do you? Yes. So they've been recalled. Um, 7,300 boxes of its 40-count Kodiak protein-packed power waffles contain some plastic. Now, so it's not every box, but if you've already eaten some, I wouldn't panic. Um, but there was a small, there was a presence of a small plastic film so there's package numbers. We'll put those up. I'm not going to read those on the air, but there's a UPC code to check out. And uh, don't eat them because there could be plastic in them. And that stuff's really good. You, you like them, Case, the uh, protein-packed Kodiak stuff? I like any waffle. I'll take Eggo. I'll take Kodiak. I'll take a Hotel Continental Breakfast waffle. It doesn't matter. I'm into it. Well, Megan- Hey, can I bring something up about the word continental breakfast? <laughs> you said it twice now in the past week. I used to call everything a continental breakfast. I thought it just meant free breakfast at a hotel. Like, that's what a continental was? Do you know when it's a continental breakfast, it's only when they have, like, a few things, like muffins and juice? So a continental breakfast wouldn't have waffles. Well, I knew that, by the way, that a continental was not a full breakfast. I did it! I called everything a continental breakfast, and my husband's like, no, it's going to be, like, a good one. And I go, it's continental, it's free. <laughs> and he's like, no, if they, when they have waffles and eggs and sausage and all that stuff, it's like a full breakfast. Continental is like a muffin and, get you know, go F yourself, get out of here. Did you know that? So I've never looked up Continental Breakfast that said, go F yourself, get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I didn't, I didn't no know that. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. no waffles at Continental Breakfast. Yeah, well, hotels say it all the time, too, because they don't want to give you the full thing. Uh, you probably could get a waffle in a Continental Breakfast, but you're not going to get all the accoutrement. You're not getting all the stuff. You're not getting a lot of stuff. I had no case. Did you know that? No, I thought Continental was a marketing tool that meant fancy. I thought it was the opposite. I was like, oh, Continental. I'm a traveler, baby. Because it kind of sounds like colonial, mm. which I'm just like, 
I don't know. Like, old school would be all this food here. I don't know. Like, you had me and then you lost me. It just sounds different. <laughs> so, you use. It means con- something completely different to me. So, Case, you use continental breakfast all the time instead of saying just that we're going to get breakfast just like Kenzie did. We're going yeah. to get a continental breakfast. Yeah, like it's some free fancy at the hotel. breakfast. Yeah. No, I thought it was like a leaking continental. I thought it was like a fancy, <laughs> a fancy word. <laughs> so, did you think that there could, like, a continental breakfast could be somewhere not at a hotel? Like, it didn't mean free? No, I thought it actually meant hotel breakfast. Yeah, I thought it meant free hotel breakfast. It's continental. Yeah. Ah, free hotel breakfast. It just means less stuff. That's yeah. what it means. How, what a scammy thing to do because it sounds like more stuff. I don't know why they use the word continental in it. To trick us, follow the money. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> if I, I'm like, oh, there's a lot going on there. It's continental. Yeah, I, Kenzie, I'm with you. It's across the country. It's continental. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's worldwide. It's like Pitbull. I know. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, listen. If you have any Kodiak cakes in your cupboard for the waffles, it's the Kodiak protein-packed power waffles, buttermilk, and vanilla. They may have plastic in it. Don't eat Bummer. them. Check, check the UPC code. Uh, don't do Drop it. Don't eat waffle. them. And they're really good. Like I said, Megan uh, buys those. We get them at Costco, uh, the powder. It's yeah, a, we do, too. It's really good. Okay. Uh, more stuff going on in Illinois that also involves plastic. Mm. Illinois to ban tiny plastic bottles of shampoo and lotion at hotels. Good call. Why? Because it's super wasteful because they have to throw them away even if they're, like, just lightly opened. I understand that part. But I'm just saying. Okay, it'd, be, it'd be nice. <laughs> but I mean. <laughs> Well, I, I actually, so I am also like you. I don't really care as much on this one because I hate hotel soap because I just doesn't feel right on my body and shampoo. I'll bring my own shampoo no matter what or my own soap everywhere. Well, and the big bottles are nice because, like, you know, I have, like, a lot of hair and they give you those dinky bottles. I use one of the whole things for the conditioner mm. and I'm staying there for two days and they forget to. I like the huge bottles anyways. It helps me. I, I just like to bring my own stuff. I can't take. There's a film on hotel stuff I just don't like. I feel itchy. I don't know. I don't like it. So I'm okay with this, but Case, uh, I guess you're someone that probably is upset at this. Okay, don't know what that means, but you're right. What, itchiness? I'm not itchy. Am I itchy? No, no, I said, what What? what don't you think what means? Oh, you said you're probably somebody that would be upset by this. And oh. I don't know what that means, but you are right. I am upset by See, this. bing, bing. Well, my guess would be, and I'm, this isn't judging, because I used to be this person, mm-hmm. where you'd go over my house, and I would have 72 hotel different bottles of soap, shampoo, whatever, and I'd just use it. Yeah, I do like stealing from hotels, but yeah. I also just think their shampoo is better than the one I have. Really? So I like, I like the way it feels on my body. What do you buy for shampoo? What, do you use Dawn in your hair? <laughs> like those ducks to get the oil off them. <laughs> those commercials. There's <laughs> an oil spill and they use Dawn My to get the duck. skin du- is not like a BP oil spill, you ass. <laughs> I would look at you and throw some Dawn on it. I would like a, like a hose on the jet setting so it really gets in there. I'd love to see that commercial where they're cleaning up a bunch of ducks and then Case is washing his hair. <laughs> So what do you use for shampoo? Yeah, what do you use? I use Pantene. Oh, it's not good for you. It's a name brand. But it's not good. Don't do that. Why What's isn't it good? Pantene? Pantene's not good um, because <laughs> if you use Pantene, you think it works really, really well because your hair is softer, but it actually <sighs> puts a fake coating on your hair that breaks later. It's like a wax coating, and it destroys your hair. Really? It's probably why your hair's so short. It's <laughs> all snapped off. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. If you use some Dawn, you can probably get the wax coating that's on your head now off. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry I'm asking for this on the air, but the double features do a great job of Photoshopping. Can <laughs> they do a Photoshop of those ducks getting Dawn, getting the oil off them, and then Case also next to them washing his hair in the pond? <laughs> In the pond or in the sink? Am I diving into the oil? Well, those ducks are always in a pond, like nearby the oil spill. Ducks are. Yeah. Well, well, (laughs) You leaving bottom (laughs) (laughs) lounge? The Brian and Kenzie Show.